All right, so it's Tuesday, August 13th, and today Muse launched a pretty significant update. Uh, it's the update to the 6.0 version of Muse, and one of the great new features is now if you use anchors to hyperlink on a web page, like I've got some hyperlinks up here that link to anchors on the same page. These aren't different separate pages here. Uh, now when you scroll into those positions, you can use the active state of the hyperlink to actually change the appearance of it based on where you've scrolled to. So if I scroll down, I will reach the apparel anchor and it just switched over to the active state for the apparel hyperlink. And as I keep scrolling, I get to promotional and now promotional is in its active state because of that anchor position. So as I keep scrolling or as I click on these links, I can do a single page uh, website here that acknowledges the uh, navigation in a whole new way that I've always wished we could do in Muse. So I'm pretty excited about this update. Let me show you how I did this. All right, so back to the Muse project. I've dropped in a horizontal navigation menu. And in this horizontal navigation menu, I've written in some just random hyperlinks. This is a fake website that I built just for this tutorial. Uh, but essentially, it's got sections to it. It's got a music section here with music photography, uh, an apparel section here with apparel photography. It's broken down into these sections just by design. So I've got appropriate hyperlinks up here at the top. And I've built those by going into the menu settings here and choosing a manual menu type. If you choose top level pages or all pages, then this navigation will build itself based on your overall uh, website in the planning view. So I don't want to do that because this website only has one page and then I would just have one hyperlink at the top. So I need to manually build this menu out and I'm going to manually create it with the hyperlinks that I want by typing them in. Uh, there are these little plus signs here when you select one of these to add a uh, new item to the menu. So I've added an item for each category here. Uh, and I've gone in also back to the settings here. I've turned on edit together and I've put them all on a transparent background. I've chosen the font uh, Bebas Noya just because, you know, it's a nice bold font, easy for everyone to see in these tutorials. And uh, in choosing that font, I've made it white and all of those match one another. But then you'll want to go back in here and uncheck where it says edit together because the next part you might want to be different for each item. In my case you saw that my rollover color and my active state color matched the section that it was scrolling to. It just gives it more of a functional visual style. So that's exactly what you want to do. Uncheck edit together once you get these looking the way you want them in their normal state. So now we move on to the states uh, menu up here. In the top left corner it says menu item normal. I've got specifically the music box selected. You don't have to do these in order but uh, you might want to go in there and just hammer them out in order so you don't lose track of where you are. Uh, I'm going to go to the normal state here and you can see that I've gone in and customized rollover to be on a red background. I've customized active to be filled with red as well. But really all you want to do is go through these one by one and set the active state to look the way you want it to look when you've scrolled to the position that has that content in it. So I've gone through and set all my colors here. And that's really all I've done. I've set a background color for each one of these boxes and then I can go back to normal. So that kind of sets the stage for this, but now you need to create these sort of zones where the computer will understand when that state becomes active. And then you need to hyperlink these to those zones. So the way you do that is by creating anchors. You can see here I've got this music anchor, which I created just by clicking on the anchor icon up here on the toolbar, and then by clicking in this position on the page, which drops a little anchor and has me type in a name for it. I can delete that and do one with you guys so you can see. I'll click on that little anchor, I'll click on the page, and I will type the word music. Then hit OK. So now I've created one anchor. Uh, I now need to create one for each section. And you guys will notice that I created these anchor anchors pretty high up. These, anch these, anchor <laughs> Tongue twisters now. Uh, these anchors are positioned higher up than their respective section because I want the color to change before it gets to the very tippy tippy top of the browser. I want the color to change when we're right about here, uh, not when we've already sc scrolled past the word apparel. So I position these a little bit 
elevated from where you would think to put them, but experiment. You guys decide for yourselves where you want that to be. Uh, because one of the important things that I haven't mentioned yet is this whole bar, all of these objects up here on this black bar are pinned. They are pinned to the top of the browser, so as we scroll, they stay at the top. It, they're not going to scroll away because then we wouldn't even see this effect happening. Uh, so if you guys have not pinned this stuff to the top of the browser yet, uh, definitely go ahead and do that because without it pinned, it'll, it'll just not be on the screen and you won't be able to see the effect of this. So with these objects pinned at the top, I am taking up some space and I need to compensate for that space by scooting these anchors up. So just place your anchors a little higher uh, than you would think they need to be and you'll probably be just fine. might take a little fine tuning. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to click on music and I'm going to choose to hyperlink that to my anchor. So I've got to make sure I'm choosing the right page because you can actually hyperlink to an anchor on a different page. So this is called the anchor active states page of uh, this particular Muse document. Yours will be called whatever you decided to call the page and I'm going to link to music and then that one's done. And then I would go to apparel, link that to the apparel anchor, promotional, link that to the promotional anchor, etc., etc. So create all your anchors, then come up to your manual navigation bar here and hyperlink each one of these boxes. So the first thing we did, we created the active states for each one. So the stage has been set. Then we created the anchors to establish when these colors will change, when they will become active. And then by hyperlinking them, we've made the connection between the button and the position on the page where the button is going to become active. So now if we preview it, I put music at the very top so music is already active but as I scroll we'll reach that invisible uh, apparel anchor right about now. There we go. So apparel just turned that brown color and then the promotional one right about now. There we go. And then portrait etc etc. And the other cool thing is by hyperlinking these, these are functioning hyperlinks. That's a cool advantage because uh, Muse even knows to use the smooth, the smooth scroll uh, JavaScript uh, tool to make this not jump abruptly, but actually scroll as if we're scrolling it, which works on a Mac or a PC or now even iOS devices just fine. So this is a really, really fantastic way to build single page uh, websites. You can do an entire website in one page. I might even have to go back and add this to the Birdie Boutique website that you guys saw in the previous tutorial because uh, I think this is a really fantastic way to navigate. So if you guys like this, I've got more tutorials coming soon. Uh, please subscribe, and I hope to uh, sort of build a following of people who love Muse as much as I do. So far, so good. All right, guys. See you soon.